and welcome back. I don't know what number this is. It's like number four, I think, maybe five, um, of the retinal series. This is the sort of highest percentage that you can find over the counter in terms of at a department store, not in a specialized clinic. So it's uh, your Spacing K, Sephora, Ulta, Mecca, Cult Beauty, uh, John Lewis, Selfridges, Harvey Nichols, that kind of uh, brand. I have separated out the ones that are a similar strength or even a little bit higher from the clinical brands. I will do those separately. They include people like Obagi, Environ, I made a list actually, Obagi, Retroderm, the higher one, Environ, Image, uh, and Medicate. Medicate have a lot of products, so I might give them their own sort of 10 minute video just to sort of get them all out there because there's a lot. More so that they don't take over the video with everyone else in. None, none of it's sponsored, it's just, I thought it might be an idea to just give it to you separately. And then I'm gonna do The Ordinary. I have six of their, six? Two, three, six of their retinols. And I just wanna give you the information on them and do with them from strength, mild up to sort of slightly higher. So this is, a couple of points on this. Every retinol in this video is above the EU recommended allowance. It's not a law, it's the EU recommendation of 0 0.3. Um, they are all, with the exception of two, but they kind of are, you can find them around, uh, available. So they're not breaking any laws, they're just going against EU advice, but as I've said many a time, God knows what's gonna happen after Brexit. I, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna start with SkinCeuticals. This is 0 0.5. Refining night cream with 0.5% pure retinol. It is not encapsulated. It is pure retinol in a cream formula um, On the inky list The inky list is here. The retinol is there in red um, Very very I SkinCeuticals for me came out near the top in terms of Messaging um, Usage instructions they weren't over exaggerating the amount of retinol in their product. They were very clear and consistent. We are 0 0.3, 0 0.5 or one. The one is coming at the end. Um, so yeah, and obviously as you would expect, I've put them here because you can get them in places like Selfridges, um, but they would very, very happily sit in next week's video, which is the clinical side. So they're here because they are more widely available than some of the other brands I mentioned. But make no mistake, if you are going to a clinic and they sell SkinCeuticals, it is a fantastic brand. That's it, 0 0.5 to start us off. Then we come to one of the two most mentioned retinols in this whole uh, series. And I'm using the word retinol correctly because all of these are a retinol. Um, this also has a blend though, just to confuse matters. This is Sunday Riley High Dose Retinoid Serum, A+. It looks like this, and this, you have seen this everywhere. Um, it label, the, here's a classic example of reading the label and making sure you know what you're buying. To put me off, it's a great formula, it's a great retinol. However, there is a however. There's another big however coming up, so. Has it's labeled on the front, there's no need to spin it from a marketing point of view. We know that vitamin A as an ingredient is the gold standard in terms of anti-aging. We know that retinol is the gold standard in terms of, if you put it into a formula, you will get a result on the skin. Even at 0, uh, 0 0.01, you will get a mild exfoliation effect. It will uh, penetrate if it's the right molecule. So there's no need to dress it up in a hula hoop skirt and a big feather boa. There is one that does that slightly more than this coming up. However, Sunday Riley say Advanced Strength Retinoid Serum delivers a 6.5% solution, solution of stabilized retinoid blends, blends, and botanical retinol alternative extracts into the skin. What, so technically, all of that mixed together gives you 6.5% of a solution. However, the retinol that's in there is actually, and on the back, you get, you get the facts, containing 5% retinoid ester blend, which immediately you can divide by 10, so that becomes a 0 0.5. And that's being generous because if it is a nice oily formula or a silicone formula, which this is, um, it may buffer it even more. So 
5% retinol ester blend. So it's already a fatty, and that's the um, uh, hydroxypenicolone retinoate. So that immediately brings you to like a 0 0.5. Then a 1% liposomal encapsulated retinol blend. So all of this is a blend upon a blend. And 0.5% blue-green algae with natural retinoid alternative activity. Well, I'm not being funny. I don't care about the retinoid alternatives. I'm doing them separately. There's the Bacuchiol and all that sort of stuff. But it's not a retinol, so I just wanted to keep it for what it is. So, the reality is it's 0.5% hydroxypenicolone retinoate, around about. <laughs> and 1% of a retinol blend. Now looking at it, I would say, and I could be wrong, and by all means, if Sunday or the team want to contact me and go, actually, we did a clinical and we found that it was this strength, whatever, happy days, I will put my glad rags on and come back to you. I reckon you've actually got, it says 6.5, I reckon at a push it's 0 0.6-ish. 0 0.5 to 0 0.6-ish. I can't say clearer than that because that's the information I've been given and that's what I'm working towards. Again, that is not to say that the team at Sunday Riley haven't been great in giving me all the info. It's just that if you are picking this up off the street and you look at it, you go, oh, 6.5%, that's high. Not really. You'll probably find this is higher and this is 0 0.5. Do you see what I mean? So good formula, maybe less of the jazz hands and just give it to us straight. What is actually going to get to my face? What's actually going to get to my face? Maybe I'll make a retinol product and call it, what is actually going to get to my face? <laughs> okay, now one that I really liked for the messaging, Dermalogica. Overnight retinol repair, 1%. It comes like this. I did destroy the box trying to get into it. Sorry, Dermalogica. Um, obviously, you get all the blimp that comes with it. Um, and by blimp, I mean what Dermalogica does in all their packaging, which is their little face mapping thing. Overnight retinol repair, 1%, and a buffing cream. Now, the buffer cream means that you can take this from a 1% and make it a, a 0.2, or a 0.3, or a 0.5, depending on how much you want to use. Now, that will be, it won't be measurable. You're going to have to use your brain and go by, well, actually, I've put a big whack of this and only a teeny bit of this, so it's probably closer to a 0.8. But if you do a teeny bit of this and blend it into a proper amount of this, then you're gonna have a buffed retinol. So what I like is, here's our 1%, we recommend you buffer it with this, especially if you have not used a retinol before because this will be too strong for you. Perfect. Thank you, Dermalogica. I like the messaging on the inky list, which is here. Try and put one thing down at a time, shall we? Um, Overnight retinal repair, it's the top little bit here and the retinol is right near the front, as you would expect, because it's 1%. Not too long an ingredients list. Um, this one, for example, has 58 ingredients. That is definitely a blend. Um, easy to use, nicely labeled. They recommend to use it uh, a couple of, two, three times a week, blended with a bit of this, so until you get used to it. And then eventually the idea is you can use this on its own. Perfect. Thanks very much. Paula's Choice. Now, Paula's, Cho Paula's Choice have a lot of products with retinol in them, but these are the only <laughs> these are the only two that are a sort of definitive retinol treatment. There is the fairly new retinol booster. Well, it was new to me. I haven't seen it. If it's been out ten years, my bad. But I don't think it has. Uh, Paula's Choice one percent retinol booster. When I first got this, I thought it was going to be an oil. It's not. It's a cream. More of which coming up. And Paula's Choice Clinical 1% Retinol Treatment with Peptides and Vitamin C. I think this is Nadine's favourite, Nadine Baggett. I think it was this one. Um, when I first used this, which was a couple of years ago, it was too strong for me. My skin peeled. My skin did not like it. However, I have since been using, as you all know, a prescription strength retinoid. And now I can use this absolutely fine. No problem. Here's my problem again <laughs> with both of these. If this was an oil booster, and it's not, it's a cream formula, like that. It's a light lotion, it's not, you know, it's water-based. Um, if it was an oil formula, you could feasibly add this to any moisturizer or use it on days in between when you're using something much stronger to give you the continued effect of a good retinol, but not be too strong. 
I, I'm not quite sure why there is a 15 mil retinol booster when you have a 30 mil proper hardcore retinol treatment that is loaded with peptides and vitamin C and all sorts of good things. I feel like this is superfluous. So if, you're, if I had to pick, I'd say go here 100%, but you will need to buffer it if you haven't used any kind of retinol before. And by that, I mean, put it on your skin, put a moisturizer on top, or if you want to mix it with a moisturizer first. Um, you don't have to do that, but if you have what I would call virgin skin, virgin retinol, virgin vitamin A skin, and you go straight in with this, you're gonna know about it. So go easy. I kind of don't understand this one. It could just be me. By all means, if you use it and you love it, give me a shout. But the, the instructions are the same, uh, which are being Paula's Choice, very good. Make sure you use sunscreen, use a pea-sized amount, yada, 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 fantastic. But I don't quite, I don't know why you would have a booster. Again, maybe I answered my own question by saying you can't use this every night, you would boost with this in between, maybe. Maybe you would do that, fair play, if that's the way you do it, that's fine. But if you were going to buy a retinol for the first place, in the first place, I wouldn't start here, I would go here, but that's me. Um, now the most talked about retinol I can ever remember in the history of Jesus, amen. Drunk elephant. A Passioni retinol cream, reboot and smooth. Looks like this, as I'm sure all of you know. Um, my issue, and I do have an issue, is uh, for a brand that calls itself Clean Clinical, to use a an ingredient that is so widely known. We know how to use it, we know how to get the best out of it, we know how to safely use it, we know uh, what it doesn't work well with, we know what it doesn't like. To then almost try and do it because you feel, it's like you wanna reinvent the wheel and bring out something that you say can be, for example, <laughs> uh, John Elephant's R&D guy on Instagram, I think his name is Nathan, I apologize if it's not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, um, has a series of Instagram stories saved on his page, which I have screen grabbed. The advice in them about how to use retinol to someone like me is borderline horrific. Uh, one of them says, and I will drop it in here, mix a pea-sized amount of your retinol with a pump of your eye cream and, and then it's any of the other products. It's basically there where they blend it and you make a cocktail. Um, but, but here, here's my problem just with that alone. They're saying you can mix these together and apply it. Do not put this around your eye. And it even says on the pack, avoid the eye area. Why are you then telling people on social media that it's totally cool and funky to make a cocktail and blend it and put it all over your face? Don't do that. Okay, I, I very, very rarely go against a brand directly and say, don't do that, but don't do that. Because that also gives the impression, yeah, you can blend a bit of this and put it around the eye. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. So my only concern is, let's talk about the formula. The formula I'm sure is great, but it has 62 ingredients, 62. I think that was my counting. I didn't have my glasses on. I could be wrong, but it's thereabouts. It's this long. That's an inky list. 62 ingredients for something, basically, it's kind of like dressing up something that didn't need all that wrapping. We know that retinol is a brilliant molecule. Also, calling it a vegan retinol is disingenuous. All retinol is vegan. Not all retinol formulas, but retinol as a molecule is a chemical man-made substance. It's vegan. Um, my concern is and I, it's a genuine concern because I've had people asking me on social media ever since it launched. If a, if a customer is used to these, and they're beautiful products, you know I love a bit of Drunk Elephant. I am not a hater. Please don't dismiss me as being a hater. I am not. I love, uh, actually, these, this is from my doubles. I have doubles of things I love. You know how much I love C-Tango. You know I love B-Hydra. Uh, La La Retro. All brilliant products, but they are very gentle. And that is Drunk Elephant's USP. We are very gentle. We are, uh, we remove the suspicious six. We are clean clinical, yada, yada, yada. To then put a 1%, a 1% retinol straight to the market and tell people you can mix it with your eye cream, to me is like that scene from Scanners where the head explodes. 
I, I was watching the Instagram like this going, wait, what? What? And it is a problem because people are asking people like me about it and then the onus is on us to say, I wouldn't do that. And it makes it look like we're being negative. I'm not being negative. I am being contrary to your advice. Yes. So don't put it around your eye. I wouldn't mix it with an eye cream, personally. Absolutely 100% you can buffer it with their, with their Lala, uh, with the other, what's the other one, Proteiny. Brilliant products. Retinol wasn't broke. It did not need to be fixed. Give you an example. This is SkinCeuticals Retinol 1%. Also, this packaging is slightly um, more, uh, I don't even know what the right word is. I'm trying desperately not to sound like I'm being negative. I'm not. This you have to pierce the foil to get in there. And as soon as you pierce the foil, the product starts to come out. You put this on, that is airtight. This, even with the instructions of squeezing it from this end, is not airtight because it's permanently exposed when you open it, if you see what I mean. And that's not, that's not a bad thing, a lot of them are, but it's being marketed as if it is the second coming and a new dawn of retinols. Retinol wasn't broke, it did not need to be fixed. Um, compare it to this, contains high concentrates of pure retinol, high potency product. Please read important information on the package insert. For external use only, avoid the eyes. Can cause irritation, redness, other signs of discomfort. Always apply a broad spectrum sunscreen. Um, always use a broad spectrum sunscreen. Marvellous. The inkey list is 28 ingredients in this one. Technically, although, and here's where marketing and spiel comes into it, in general, not talking about just drunk elephant. They call themselves clean clinical. They contain, this contains, I think I counted it as 62 ingredients. I'm thereabouts, definitely high. Um, but they call themselves clean clinical. This only contains 28 ingredients, but because it contains uh, alcohol and a silicone, drunk elephant would say this is bad. This is bad, this contains the suspicious six. I'm sorry, DE, but when it comes to big boy ingredients, I would pick this any day. And I know I'm gonna get slammed for saying that. I apologize to those of you who use this and use it responsibly and love it. Amazing, fantastic. Don't forget, my mission here is not to give anyone a hard time. My mission here is to make sure you all get the most out of your product, spend your money where you need to spend it, and use really good product and get the best skin you can get. I just have to be honest in terms of, to me, this came out of the blue for a brand where we're used to seeing this. Does that make sense? Um, and if you did send me pictures of your skin and peeling and all that sort of stuff, um, please do support me in the comments. I, like I say, at Drunk Elements done a brilliant job of marketing themselves to make it look as if, if you say anything against them, you're a hater. I am not a hater. I love so many of your products. I just think the messaging on this and the how to use on this, as someone who deals in skin and is a facialist, the messaging on this product and how to use, especially on Insta, is like, don't do it. Don't put it around your eyes. Don't do it. Um, anyway, uh, I don't want it to feel like it's all been about DE, it hasn't, it's just that it is the most requested, so I just wanted to make sure, if you're using it and you love it, and I do have friends who are using it and love it, but they are mixing it with everything and you're buffering it and bringing it right down from a one to probably a 0.3 or a 0.5 at the most. Fine and dandy, fine and dandy. Don't put this near your eye. Don't put this near your eye. And don't tell people not to put it on their eye and then tell them to put it on their eye and Instagram, oh, it's enough. Next week is clinical bits and pieces and the ordinary and I'm going to try and get them done before I go to the States. Please do leave me um, any requests for American skincare, especially American retinols that we may not be able to get here that I can pick up while I'm over there. I will see you soon. I do love your product. I do. I'm just confused. Bye.